One thing that drives a lot of my students crazy is double sharps and a double flats. First of all, what do they look like? And then the second question I always get is why in the world do they exist? And I always like to joke around and say, well, Beethoven was a bad in a bad mood and he just wanted you to suffer as much as he did. But that's not the real answer. I'm going to give you the real answer right now. But first, we're going to talk about what these look like. All right, so the first thing is the uh, double sharp. And as you can see that it looks kind of strange, doesn't it? It looks like an X pretty much, like a blocky X, an X with like made up of five blocks or so. And all a double sharp is and how you play it is it's literally a double sharp. So, you know, you have F right here. Normally F sharp would be here. And then F double sharp is right here. Now, one question I get a lot, and you may be asking yourself right now, is why don't they just call that G? Well, there's a reason behind it. And a lot of it has to do with music theory, keys, and chords, especially the chord spellings. So as you know, or you may not know, that a B major chord... So when I talk about chord spellings, by the way, I'm not, I'm not talking about C-H-O-R-D, how to spell chord. I'm talking about the three or four notes that make up the chord that you're talking about. And with triads, you're talking about three notes. So for example, B major has the notes B, D sharp, and F sharp. And actually, a B chord of any kind has to be made up of a B of some type, meaning a B sharp or flat, a D of some type, and an F of some type. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about D major, D minor, D diminished, D augmented, the B flat even, you know, uh, B flat minor. So all of those have a B of some type, a D and an F. And that's the same with all chords. So like a C chord has to have a C, an E, and a G of some type. But here, with a B major, to make it major, if you know anything about your major chords, the sharps are the next two notes up here. So here's the perfect example of why a double sharp exists in the first place. Actually, let me get us here so we can see everything. So here you have B, D sharp, F sharp. Now, if you know anything about an augmented chord, that's when you take a major chord, you take the top note, this F sharp here, and you raise it a half step. Two, it looks like G, doesn't it? But remember what I just said is that every B chord, whether it's B major, minor, diminished, augmented, B flat, or anything, that has to have a B, a D, and an F of some type. So this note up here, to make things easier on us, isn't G, it's actually F a double sharp. So now we have a B, a D sharp and an F double sharp. Still keeping with the conventions of a B, a D, or an F of some type. Let me write it out here so you can kind of visualize why they don't, you know, call this G. So here's the chord I just played. Let me get it. This is the B augmented. Like that. As you can see, it looks like any other chord you've seen. I mean, other than the double sharp. It, it's stacked evenly. It's in root position. You know, it looks like the beginning of a snowman. Now let me write if we wrote it as G instead of F double sharp and see how it might get confusing. We'll see here, now it looks like an, a chord that's in some kind of inversion rather than an augmented chord. And actually a lot of augmented chords, we'll get into this some other time, are inversions of other chords. Um, but if we wanted to make it clear that this is instead of inversion, that it's a B augmented chord, rather than anything else, we would have to have that double sharp. It just makes it very clear that you're not talking about any other type of chord, no inversions or anything, rather than this B augmented in a root position. So that's the main uh, reason for a sharp. This happens uh, depending on what kind of chord that you are on. Um, for instance, like even uh, if you're talking about, this isn't uh, double sharps, but say you have E major, maybe the E, G sharp, and B. Well, say that now you have E augmented again, and you have to raise this by half step. Well, it's a regular sharp, but you have to remember that the notes are E, G sharp, and B sharp, not C. Because remember, E chord has to have an E, a G, or a B of some type. Basically for any chord, like say G, you start on that note and then you just skip every other note. And those are the three notes that in some form will make up that G chord. Now they may be sharp or flat, depending on what you're going for. All right, let's talk about double flat. 
Okay, so here we have a, a it disappeared. Here we have a, a double flat right here. It literally looks like two flats and next to each other. Now you may be asking, why did the double sharp look like an X and not two sharps written next to each other? The only thing I can possibly think of is the distances because a sharp um, has this thing with it, right? So sharp just looks like a number sign or the kids call it a hashtag, freaking kids. But anyway, there's the sharp, right? And if you drew another sharp next to it, because the sharp has like this thing that points out from side to side, it, it first of all, it looks confusing when you write two of them right next to the, in a row, but it also takes up too much space. So I think that's the reason, I'm not 100% sure if I'm wrong, correct me, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason why double sharp looks like an X. I mean, it has the boxes on each end and in the middle, and then the flats literally look like a double flat, so. I think that's why there's a lot of weird stuff um, in music, but that makes the most sense to me. All right, now let's take a look at this, right? So you have um, actually, so yeah, you have C, E, G, and, oh, let me show you on the piano. <laughs> That'll help. You have C, E, G, and B would be, uh, well, first of all, any C chord, as you know, has a C of some type, E, and G. When you're talking about a seventh chord, all you're doing is you're, you're skipping another note and adding a note up there. So a C seventh chord, whether it's minor seventh, major seventh, uh, any of the others, has to have a C of some type, an E, a G, and a B of some form, whether they're sharp or flat. So say that we, in this instance, this is where the double flat would come in, that we have a C, you know, you may not be familiar with this chord, but a C fully diminished seventh chord. So remember, we have to have these four notes in some kind. We can't call this B, if it's going up, we can't call it a C, we can't call it an A. It's got to be B something, right? So, when, so if we're talking about a foolish, fully diminished seventh, you start with a diminished triad, C, E flat, G flat. If you're not sure about chords, uh, don't worry. It's not the most important thing here. Now, you still have that B, right? Well, in a fully diminished seventh chord, by definition, it has to be a one and a half steps away from the octave. So here's the octave, half step, whole step, one and a half steps, also called semitones. Some people will <laughs> kill me for saying um, half steps. But anyway, so now we have C, E flat, G flat, a. Wait, oops. No, that's not A. Remember, it has to be B double flat. So that's why sharp double sharps and double flats exist is really for naming conventions. And again, what I mean by naming and spelling is really the notes that make up the chord or the scale uh, or anything like that. So it's really, it's actually, believe it or not, used to alleviate confusion because if you had the C E G C E flat G flat and then you put an A there, um, that it's just it's harder to figure out what kind of chord that really is. If you put the B double flat, it's very clear that you're talking about a diminished chord or an augmented chord or whatever chord you're talking about. So I know it's crazy, but it is designed to alleviate confusion and not give you more. So if you have any questions about how these double sharps or flats work, let me know in the comments. I would really love to hear it. I'm sure there's other uses in music uh, for them, but this is really like the, the number one thing that I bring up when students are struggling with not only what these are, but why do they have a music? Why don't they call it A? Because every, every student, especially young, complains. They like to do that. Complains <laughs> that uh, there's double sharps and double flats. So that's why. And if you want to check out some of my other videos on chords and things like that, I'll make sure to post a link somewhere for you to click on. And then, of course, in the description as well, where all the juicy links and extra activities are. So thanks, everybody. Uh, Tim from Lessons on the Web, and I'll check you out for the next lesson.